This video shows you six basic ways to make beautiful leaves for your embroidery projects. The first and the most common one is the fishbone stitch. Start by coming out from the tip of the leaf and making a small straight stitch on the spine. Then come out from one side to go back in below the last stitch on the leaf's spine. You would do the same on the other side. Repeat this process on both sides alternately. Spacing the stitches will create gaps that will add to some variation. While some stitchers like to go across the stitch line on the spine, I prefer to keep the stitches right under the other. Either way, it's okay. You will see that the spine of the leaf gets created naturally with the stitch. And the angled stitches on the sides provide a nice play of light and shade. For the spaces that get left out, use straight stitches to cover them up. And that's my gorgeous leaf using the fishbone stitch. Stay till the end of this video to see how I finish this leaf with the stems. The second leaf is made using the closed fly stitch. You would begin by making a straight stitch from the tip on the leaf's spine. Then come out from one side of the leaf to go in on the other. Before pulling out the needle completely, bring out the needle from the leaf's spine from inside the loop. This will ensure that the stitch gets a V shape. Anchor it down. Stack more stitches like this one under the other. Ensure that the anchor stitches are connected to each other. This is what makes the spine of the leaf. As you stitch, you might observe that the stitches on the sides tend to straighten out. In order to correct that and maintain the angle of the stitches, um, try to adjust the length of the anchor stitch in the center of the leaf. Work the stitch until the end of the leaf and then cover the gaps using straight stitches. And that is our beautiful leaf using the closed fly stitch. The third leaf is made using the leaf stitch. 
you would begin by making a straight stitch from the tip of the leaf on the spine. The leaf stitch is a member of the satin stitch family. So basically we are working the satin stitches at an angle on one side of the leaf and then the other. We begin by dividing one side of the leaf into a few smaller portions using straight stitches at the desired angle. Then we divide each part further. This makes it easier for us to deal with the entire pattern efficiently and accurately. Also, it helps in maintaining the angle of the stitches, which would otherwise have a tendency to straighten out. Once a side is finished, we move to the other side with the same technique. The center of the leaf of the leaf stitch might seem a little rough and we can cover that up by, by stitching the spine of the leaf. So stay till the end of the video to see how I finish this leaf with stems and spine. And that is our leaf using the leaf stitch. One of the most beautiful but less explored stitches to make leaves is the lazy daisy stitch. Start by making a lazy daisy stitch on the spine towards the tip of the leaf. Then work lazy daisies on both sides alternately. Each stitch radiates from the spine of the leaf towards the outside and they are positioned one under the other. The little anchors that hold down the lazy daisy stitches make the leaf look really pretty. Also, this is a quick way to fill in a leaf with slight gaps. This is probably one of my favorite ways to fill in a leaf and provide that rich texture. Stay till the end to see how I add the finishing touches to this leaf. And that is my gorgeous leaf using the Lazy Daisy Stitch. The raised fishbone stitch is a lovely stitch to create a slightly padded leaf. Start by making a straight stitch on the spine, almost halfway through.
Then bring the needle out from one side halfway of the leaf to take it across to the top. Pass the needle on to the other side and go through the bottom on the other side. Repeat this process. Now I will continue this process using the stab method. It will make it easier for you to understand the stitch. You will soon notice that the stitches overlap each other. The reason why the padded effect happens. Work all the way till the end narrowing down with the shape of the leaf. This stitch gives the leaf a solid filling. A spine gets formed as the stitches cross each other in the middle. And that's my beautiful leaf using the raised fishbone stitch. This leaf is worked using the fern stitch. We begin with a straight stitch from the tip on the spine. Then we add two diagonal stitches from the sides to the stitch in the middle. That's a fern stitch. Keep adding more sets of stitches that connect each other. The fern stitch can take curves and shapes quite easily. This stitch is great when you do not want to fill in the leaves but only create the spine and ribs for texture. Work all the way to the bottom of the leaf. After working on the entire leaf, 
we start to connect the stitches on the sides to complete it. The outline is done using the back stitch. And that's it. That's my leaf using the fern stitch. You can now see how each stitch is different from the other. That is my fishbone stitch. That's the closed fly stitch. That's the leaf stitch. This is the Lazy Daisy. This one is the Raised Fishbone Stitch. And this one is the Fern Stitch outlined using the back stitch. Now I will be working on the stem. Let's start from one end of the stem. I'm using three strands of cotton embroidery floss. Start by making a straight stitch, move the thread to the left and bring out your needle midway. Keep up with this process. Keep the stitches very small when working on the cursive writing. It will help take the curves easily. I'm ending my stitches at sharp turns and starting again to continue with the line. I'm using the stab method here as it's just much easier this way to make smaller stitches. I'm almost done with my lettering. Okay, I see an unpleasant gap in this letter, so I use a small anchor stitch to hold the separated rows together. Now let us finish the leaves. Some of our leaves can afford to take stitching on the spine. I have stitched over the leaves uh, made using the fishbone stitch. 
the leaf stitch and the lazy daisy. The others are fine without the stitches. Stitching on the spine helps to smoothen out the rough edges made while stitching. Now the pattern is complete and ready. Do let me know if you enjoyed this video and learning how to make six different types of leaves. Thank you for watching.